Hello dear viewers, I'm George from Ireland, this is my British poetry channel and I'm going to uh, read to you from a poem by John Keats and I visited um, his last resting place only a couple of years ago in Rome uh, so his bicentenary or the bicentenary of his death is coming up in February um, uh, 21, so next year and I'm considering returning to Rome for the 200th anniversary of him being called to immortality and visiting the house that he lived in and indeed died in in Rome and then going to his grave on that particular day. But anyway, I'm going to read you one of his um, less commonly read but uh, most light-hearted pieces. Um, so uh, here it goes. A Song About Myself by John Keats. There was a naughty boy, a naughty boy was he. He would not stop at home, he would not quiet be. He took in his knapsack a book full of vowels and a shirt with some towels and a slight cap for a nightcap, a hairbrush, comb ditto, new stockings for old ones. Oh, split, uh, wood split oh, this knapsack, tight at back, he riveted close and he followed his nose to the north to the north and he followed his nose to the north. There was a naughty boy, and a naughty boy was he, for nothing would he do but scribble poetry. He took an inkstand in his hand, and a pen, big as ten, in the other, and away, in a pother, he ran to the mountains, and the fountains, and the ghosts, and the posts, and the witches, and the ditches, and he wrote in his coat, when the weather was cool, fear of gout, and without, when the weather was warm, och the charm, when we choose, to follow one's nose to the north to the north, to follow one's nose to the north. There was a naughty boy, and a naughty boy was he. He kept little fishes in washing tubs three, in spite of the might of the maid, nor afraid of his granny good, he often would, hurly-burly, get up early, and go, by hook or crook, to the brook, and bring home Miller's thumb, tittle bat not over fat, minnow small as the stall of a glove not above the size of a nice little baby's little fingers oh he made twas his trade of a fish a pretty kettle a kettle a kettle of of fish a pretty kettle a kettle there was a naughty boy and a naughty boy was he he ran away to scotland the people for to see there he found that the ground was hard that a yard was as long that a song that a cherry was as red um, that lead was as weighty, that fourscore was as eighty, that a door was as wooden as in England. So he stood in his shoes, and he wondered, he wondered, he stood in his shoes, and he wondered. So that completes this um, harmless ditty by him. Um, it's uh, silly, childlike, uh, a little bit repetitious about going to Scotland, which he actually did. So I'm not sure that doesn't require a great deal of explication. He is that naughty boy. Following to follow your nose, just go forward. It depends which way you're, for, you're you're pointing. But in this case, he was looking to the north. So knapsack, in case you don't know, is a small backpack. Um, book was full of vowels. I think it must have had a few consonants too. Um, okay, a nightcap. Well, I know it means a sort of alcoholic drink to help you sleep, but um, it can also be. They really did wear a cap sometimes because. There was no central heating, it was chilly. Don't want to lose so much heat because they say most of your heat comes out of your bonce and you know, not all males have a full head of follicles as I do. Um, so comb ditto, as in ditto means the same as above. When you mention that, a new stockings. So stockings can be long socks or indeed long johns, something like that to wear on your trousers. Remember these were chilly times without central heating. So you have to dress warmly you weren't by the fire, so you'd be very cold. So that's why they would gather around the blazing family hearth of an evening, uh, tight at back at the back. If you riveted close to so to rivet as those metal things you drive in to hold things together. But anyway, something hold close. So going on to the second stanza. Um, so scribble poetry. Yes, it, it, the song about myself. It's it's entitled. So it really is about himself. So a ten as big as pen. A uh, pen as big as ten. Was it really that big? Um, why is he saying that? If it was, it surely couldn't have been quite so big, but just to show that he wrote a great deal. 
that was the most important thing in his life. And um, he's among the top ten poets in the English language, despite being summoned to the Pantheon at the age of only a quarter century. And away in a pother. So pother. I'm not quite sure that is that as a bother, or is it pottering around, as in foostering? I'm a little bit curious. And the fountains and the ghosters. He spells it G-H-O-S-T-E-S. So that's ghosts. Perhaps there's just a, an antique spelling. And the posts, um, postess, he spells it P-O-S-T-E-S. I'm unsure about that. Or oh, the witches and the ditches. Are some of these ry rhymes somewhat shitty, just possibly? Forced rhymes. And the weather was as cool, fear of gout and without. And so on. I think a lot of what he's saying is just... Um, North Britain's the same as South Britain. Britain. Och, the charm. O-C-H. But I think that's meant to be Scots pronunciation. Och, which is just mm, an expression like surprise. Uh, just we say O. Oh, it's got no semantic signification to begin any sentence or remark. Anyway, going on to the third stanza. He kept three little fishes, which is obviously antiquated because we know it's an invariable plural. One fish, two fish, three fish, a million fish. In the washing tubs, three. I doubt he actually carried a washing tub. Um, of his granny good. So does his good grandmother really send things with him? Hurley burly. Well, Shakespeare talks about that as in a fight. Get up early. So I think these some of these are just meaningless rhymes just for the sake of it. By hook or crook. So crook is in a shepherd's crook. I'm not sure why he would possibly have a hook. I don't think we're supposed to um, believe this. To the brook. Brook being a stream, in case you didn't know, like the surname brook. Brooks Bank and all the rest of it. Bring home Miller's Thumb. I don't know what Miller's Thumb is. Obviously, there's a surname, someone who actually is a Miller, and why would we be getting their thumb? Um, anyway, so minnows, there's a very small bird, uh, sorry, very small for, for fish. Anything else? Oh, fish was a pretty kettle. Talk about a kettle of fish. I'm not sure why. I mean, there's a kettle drum, a kettle where you boil water. Could be kettle just be any vessel to hold fluid? Possibly. Shows what I know. Um, I'm not good at cooking. So he goes to Scotland and he finds everything's the same as in South Britain. That a yard was as long, that a song was as merry, that a cherry was as red, that a lead was as weighty, that four score was 80. Score meaning 20. Four score, 20 multiplied by four is 80. Um, anyway, so um, that's enough about John Keats. Toodle pip. <laughs>